You when this shirt still up. fit me properly. <laughs> <laughs> He's gawking at the bottle that's in his hand. They're collectible, to say the least. You see how it's got the blackness in the bottom? Something that's fun to look at and something that's fun to talk to. Hold it there for about three or four seconds. It's like an explosion suddenly covers the roof of your mouth. Oh, that's trouble. I don't want to know how much it is. I just want to know where to find it. Crazy neighbor came over and poured it in Coke. So what was it like getting back from Alaska? <laughs> uh, well, it, it was a little difficult. Could have gotten faster with the yeah, horse. I, <laughs> right. Somebody said I should just rent a team of dogs, but from Dutch Harbor, you actually need like a team of dolphins if you're going <laughs> to get back to the mainland. That makes sense. Um, I could not get a friendly whale to pick me up. I tried. You speak well. I do. Mm. I do. It's so. a, it's a yeah, very useful skill. Hi, Dr. Doolittle. Hi. Welcome to Whiskey Barbecue. It's Ryan. He's a Harris. Joe, he's a Harris. It's Evan, he's the neighbor. I feel bad because last time we had you here, I didn't even ask what you do, what your side gig is, what you're into. Oh, you, you have this me. here. Oh, yes, yeah, you. So, yeah, you. So House of Harris Brewers, first of all, was the name I gave my home brewery many years ago. Uh, when this shirt still up. fit me properly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was problems. a lot of IPAs ago. Um, <laughs> So my day job's in software. I've been a software engineer for about 20 years, but okay. uh, last year a partner and I started up a business consulting for breweries. So we call ourselves a full service consultancy because we literally offer about 200 services. Wow. Ranging from writing a business plan for a new brewery to full build out, construction, uh, system installation and design. We do expansions for existing breweries. We can help breweries get their beer out of their tap room and into the market awesome uh, things like that so the company's called brewer we brewer we because uh -huh. we are in this mm -hmm. together uh -huh. and uh we're at brewerwe.com we will link all that below right now evan is he's gawking at the bottle that's in his hand because we've talked about blends before and not only did joe bring over blanton's but joe what is this this is blanton's straight from the barrel uh <laughs> blanton's is always a single bar uh, barrel bourbon but this particular one is cask strength and comes in at uh, 128.2 proof, a massive 64.1% alcohol. Mm. Uh, this one was dumped Ooh. on April of 16. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, this is an April Fool's dump. Really? Is yeah, it? April Fool's 2016. How about that? Uh, barrel number 216, warehouse H, Rick 11. This is bottle number 10 from that barrel. All right, catch me up on the horse that's the court. Yeah, sure. So there are... Uh, individually designed corks for each of the letters in the name Blanton's and when you put them in a row they look like a horse running a race and stop action really yeah. this one is the N with the apostrophe so it's one of the it's the second the, N. The second N in Blanton's that's okay. right and you can get on and you can get little displays where you can put all the corks in them you can spill it all the way across yeah the so display looks kind of like a tasting tray yep. from a from a brewery okay and you just put your corks in it and it looks like the horse is running on the track they're pretty interesting they're they're collectible to say the least they are uh but you won't get one off a bottle like this very often no. because these are not easy to come by so one thing about this unfiltered uncut and bottled straight from the barrel so it is isn't going to come out on film but you see how it's got the blackness in the bottom oh yeah that's the actual little char bits from the barrel that it rested in this is quite literally someone could have taken a thief pulled it out and put it straight into this bottle it hasn't been filtered hasn't been anything this is as close to a barrel taste as you're going to get without you know standing next to the barrel but you don't know me huh. I'll, you've I'll never go. seen me turn a barrel up <laughs> <laughs> it's been done so it smells on the smell it smells crazy so you yeah. know last time i was here you talked about uh bourbon being like a really uh, unnecessarily firm handshake this is gonna crush your knuckles <laughs> right like you know it's a 16 year old who's like 6'6 six, six, 330 pounds and he's like hey man how's it going okay so whenever if you ever get this and you smell it don't get it too close to your nose it'll it'll do that it'll send, your nose it'll hairs. send some nose hairs Woo. yeah it's uh it, it smells so much like honey though mm -hmm. it's got a lot of like sweetness on the smell Oh, that's trouble. Holy cow. That is amazing. That coats your mouth just like honey. If you just hold it there for about three or four seconds, it's like an explosion suddenly covers the roof of your mouth. It just Dude. really blows up. <laughs> that is so nice. Yeah, it, it explores and finds every part of your mouth and just coats it. Wow. Uh, without, shockingly, at 128 proof, without being completely overbearing. 
It doesn't taste no. that hot at all. It doesn't. It's got nowhere zero near. Zero burn. I mean, there is no burn in this at all. It does not taste like you're drinking a cast strength bourbon. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. And mm. and it's just this smooth, I guess, honey-like texture. I'll go back to that. It's just very smooth. Kind of thick, but just smooth. That is wow. That is so <laughs> quite wild. Quite sweet. Yes. You know, so, I'm going to a drop because I don't want to chug this whole thing as right. it is. So I, I made the analogy a while back where I was talking about a particular bourbon was real clingy, like the bad mm -hmm. kind of ex-girlfriend clingy. Mm -hmm. That's like the one that you don't ever want to leave your side. Yeah. You just want it to stay right there. This is like <laughs> this is like um, something that's fun to look at and something that's fun to talk to as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything about this is good. I don't even want to put water in this. Well, I don't. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you right to. now, it opens it up a lot. I'm going to. I'm scared to, want to see what this is like. Oh, wow. Just from the smell alone, you start getting the cherries and mm. all the other stuff starts coming out of it. It's not just the honey. This is like oh, that's crazy. Greek tapas. Like, you get honey and dates. And... Yeah. Where, did, so, where does oh. one even find this bottle? Yeah, where, I don't want to know how much it is. I just want to know where to find it. I well, want to know how much it was in the ballpark. So anyway. some of the best places to find a bottle like this and other more rare Blanton's bottles are duty-free shops and international airports. True. Huh. Uh, now, you can't buy them if you're just on a domestic flight, unfortunately. So you need to be coming or going mm -hmm. uh, from a cruise or a, an international flight. Uh, I got these from somebody up in the northeast somewhere that sent them to me. Not quite sure where he got them. There's a couple of good bottle shops in the Chicago area that get mm -hmm. stuff that maybe we don't see. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's just say those rarely make it onto their shelves. Right. They wind up in the mail to somebody like me. Yeah. Uh, I bumped into two bottles of this at a bottle shop in, well, a bottle shop. One of the only two liquor stores in Dutch Harbor, Alaska last week. Mm. Okay. Um, and I damn near bought them just because you you don't see them in the wild yeah. yeah but liquor's two to three times the cost in dutch harbor as it is on the mainland yeah next time that um, happens you call that. me i'll send you my credit card <laughs> yeah, number. got you you just bring them back all over that yeah so i mean these when you find them it'll be one or two bottles wow uh, this is this is this is something completely different oh yeah no that's oh, nice yeah. i'm i'm not disappointed in that at all it does give it just a just the slightest rise in the back of it, it yeah the, just the slightest the water it does open up where you get a little bit more of the alcohol burn but i'm gonna say it putting the water in it it, it kind of muted the flavors it did to me a little bit yeah, yeah no, I, I agree i'm, the I'm front less of, of it wasn't as prominent whereas I'm, the back end picked up a little bit i like the nose better with the water but i don't like the taste better with the water so you'll notice obviously that this wasn't full when i got here so obviously I've, had yes. <laughs> uh, I've, I've had it a number of ways and i'll also admit that my crazy neighbor came over and poured it in coke oh that won't happen again ever <laughs> <laughs> there was a lecture and then i pointed at my cheap stuff and it hasn't happened since he can use all the world. weller special reserve he wants to in his coke um so I've had this a lot of ways, and on top of a chunky rock is is the best way to go. Okay, um, just it slightly waters it down, small pours. Uh, you know, it's it just I've proofed it twenty different ways, and I just can't hmm. beat freshly poured over a large cube. All right, I have the actual rocks. We should probably put oh, you've got the these. rocks, yeah. rocks, yeah, rocks, yeah. nice, rocks, rocks. Rocks. square little rocks in a bag in my freezer. This is amazing. I wanted I wanted to sit here and enjoy this. Yeah, yeah, that is pretty darn good. This is something that on a, a Texas evening, when you got the cotton candy skies, you just grab a stogie and mm -hmm. call absolutely it, call it an evening. This pairs fantastically with a cigar. So I'm if you drag lie. him out of the front door of your house, I can hide the bottle. We have a cigar tonight while we're drinking right. this. After a hard day's work, <laughs> uh, watching workers work on Ryan's patio, I could enjoy this with a cigar. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of hard work to watch people work on. It is. Yeah. They were sweating yesterday, and I was like, I better go inside. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing me out. <laughs> Don't worry, y'all see the new patio eventually. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this over, Joe. It's yeah, amazing. absolutely. Glad Super, you enjoyed it. Absolutely good. Uh, happy to share it. Super impressive. And... All right, so I just want to sit here and nerd out in this, so let's let them go away so we can just really enjoy this with them staring at us. So, hey, until next time. The best whiskey is your favorite. Best barbecue is the way that you like it. Be sure to share both. Cheers. 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 That is fantabulous. That doesn't suck. Not at all. That is within the top 
three whiskeys that I've had in the past year. And you don't like bourbon. And I'm not a bourbon guy. Mm -mm. I have had the regular Blantons, and I will, I will admit that I believe the regular Blantons is overhyped for what it is. Mm -hmm. That. <laughs> that. That's a whole different thing. Hi. Hi, Toot. I see you. That is such Michelle's face. Mm-hmm. It's too cute to be his face. Yeah, no, <laughs> so yesterday she was wearing her little Batman pajamas. Nice. And I leaned back and he's in the back seat. Evie, Evie, who's your daddy? <laughs> Bat daddy. She goes, my daddy, Batman. <laughs>